We will never return to the pre-pandemic economy or real estate market. In fact, while we were waiting for something extreme to happen, like the bubble to burst, rates to drop, or foreclosures to surge, what we found was the economy resisted, inflation stayed sticky, and home ownership became an anchor for those who have one and a bona contention for those who don't. Let's jump into September's market highlights and how higher for longer is affecting all things, including Denver's home buyer and seller. September came to a resounding end with government averting a shutdown by passing a stopgap funding bill to remain open for another 45 days, hoping time would solve all their opposition. The markets, however, were hoping for closure. So stocks wrapped up their worst month in 2023, keeping trend as the S&P 500 fell 5% and the NASDAQ dropped 6% overall. Meanwhile, higher for longer permeated the bond market as well, as the 10-year Treasury yield rose to a staggering 16-year high of 4.71%, concurrently pushing the 30-year fixed mortgage rate to 765 the highest it's been since the Y2K scare. These higher rates, coupled with stubbornly high home prices, have contributed to making home affordability the most challenging it's been in three decades. It's the kind of news that makes you wanna pull the covers up and over your head. On the economic front, consumers are torn. Consumer spending rose a solid 0.4% month over month, yet, Consumer confidence hit a four-month low as the cost of everything continues to drain. Savings accounts and jobs are harder to come by. But are they? I mean, job openings just jumped back up to 9.6 million jobs. Yes, it's down from a pandemic high of 12 million, but way more than double the 4 million available pre-2015. Weekly jobless claims measuring those people laid off and now on unemployment hit an eight-month low in September. Work from anywhere jobs continue to be plentiful, with Upwork estimating 22% of the workforce will work remotely through 2025. And wages in August, the latest report at the time of this recording, was up 5.73% year over year. Yes, that's down from 15.28 high year over year increase in 2021, but really close to our historical average of 6.2% from 1960 to 2023. The villain here is sticky inflation, making that 6% wage increase feel closer to a 2% bump. And the price of oil jumped 2% in September alone to a 10-month high as both Saudi Arabia and Russia cut supply to the global markets. Oil accounted for over half of the inflationary increase. Other notable contributors included vehicle insurance up 20%, recreation up 6%, and new vehicles up 3%. Consumers aren't just feeling it in the inflationary telling numbers. Their $1.77 trillion in student loans resumed interest accrual in September and payments in October. Property tax disputes were won or lost, and homeowners' insurance increased 21% nationally, 23% here in Colorado. And not to add insult to injury, but Colorado's insurance premiums run 32% higher than the national average. And then there's that over $1 trillion in credit card debt, accruing at an average 22% interest rate. With Colorado spenders coming in at number 11, with an average credit card debt per cardholder of $8,011. September also officially marked the end to the pandemic's saving binge, with the U.S. excess savings depleted for the bottom 80% of households. So what does all this mean for Denver buyers and sellers? If you ask many of them, they're out. I mean, they're sitting on the sidelines waiting for someone or something to tell them seasonality, appreciation, and rates have all returned to normal. But what if normal doesn't return? 
September active listings had a strong 11% jump, but not necessarily because sellers were eager to take advantage of October's best time to buy, but due to a 27% jump on the days in MLS. New listings of 4,589 in September were actually down 6% from 2022 and off from 2012 to 2019's more normal 6,000 during this month. Closed units and volume were both down 20% month over month and even more than that year over year. As those higher for longer rates, lack of affordability and a higher cost of everything kept more buyers on the sidelines. Denver home prices are also staying strong. Despite a typical phenomenon where high prices cure high prices through reduced demand, the dynamics of this market say otherwise. Denver's year-to-date median home is down 2.5%, but up 0.7% from last month and up 0.9% compared to last September. The strength of our housing market will continue to favor homeowners and frustrate home buyers. Colorado has a 67.4% home ownership rate. 30% of them don't have a mortgage liability at all. And while misleading news headlines want to point to both Denver and Colorado ranking low in paid off mortgages, compared to the national average of 38% of homes being paid off in full, I will continue to point out how strong Colorado's real estate market actually is. Ranked 50 out of 50, Colorado has the lowest mortgage delinquency of 1.7% and the lowest foreclosure rate of 0.1%. And remember, 82% of those mortgages are locked in under 5%, quite anchored in home ownership. Buyers and sellers will duel it out. Those wanting a home against those wanting to hold onto their home. For now, the supply and demand is staying in check with higher rates holding back demand and safety and stability holding back supply. The market will turn as interest rates drop or buyers decide that the rate is no longer the most important factor to moving on. In times like these, steeped in volatility, fear tends to step in and take the wheel. But understanding the intricacies of the market can help us navigate our buyers and sellers towards building wealth through real estate. It's critical to approach this market, not as an obstacle, but as a landscape of hidden opportunities. By doing so, we're not just reacting to the market conditions, we're strategically responding to them. Well, that's a wrap. And as always, until next time, this is Nicole Ruth with The Ruth Team. It's my pleasure to keep you updated.